How is it going everyone? Welcome back to the Film Nerd Review channel. Today we are looking at the most recently released film in the Rise of the Foot Soldier franchise, Rise of the Foot Soldier Origins, obviously releasing in September 2021 and recently releasing on Blu-ray and DVD. Um, it is unlike all of the previous other movies where the first two took from the point of Carlton Leach and then three and four where uh, in three and four the main character was at Tate. This movie has its main character being Tony Tucker and the original pre-production name for this movie was Rise of the Foot Soldier The Tony Tucker Story which is what a lot of people still refer to it as but Rise of the Foot Soldier Origins is is not the best name for this story because it, the foot soldier in question is Carlton Leach so calling this movie Rise of the Foot Soldier Origins makes it look like it's it's the origin of Leach when it's not it's the actually the origin of Tucker. But I think at the same time, Nick Nervin does a fantastic job directing here behind the camera. This is one of the much, much better shot and sounding moves in the Foot Soldier series. The soundtrack here, the score by Ross Power is brilliant and is, as of now, the recording of this video, the 17th of December 2021, which by the way, Spider-Man is out now. Go fucking see it. I've seen it twice, mate. Fuck you, I'm not spoiling it. It's fucking laugh. But as of the recording of this video, uh, has not yet been released. Um, I think this movie has a lot of great cast and characters in it. I think obviously uh, Pat Tate is in this movie, and Craig Fairbus does a great job in 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 the in the in the very much reduced role that he has in this one. It basically, it's just Tucker and, and Tate switching roles, whereas in the previous two, you know Tony Tucker was a side character and uh, Tate was was the main protagonist. But here it's the other way around. Um, but like I said, visually, this movie is just so much better looking than than 3 and 4. And I think having Vinnie Jones and Keith Allen here is another thing that this movie does great. But I really like the character of Basil and Joe in this movie as well. I think he's really, really well written, I suppose, and acted by the guy. Um, whose name I can't remember, but... Yeah, I think he, he does a great job portraying that character. And I think at the same time, this movie really is a great story. And it is a great beginning for Tony Tucker, and I do admit... It's cool to see his rise through um, a lot of the, uh, you know, the scene and stuff. And a lot of, there's a few places in this movie, I think notably, hang on, I need to get my, my letterbox thing up. But there is a, there's, there's a few places that literally I drive past almost every day going to see my grandma. So that's kind of neat and, and really like, you know, fucking cool. Fortnite man. Um, but yeah, I just generally think this movie is so well made. I just think it is just a movie that is just brilliantly structured. I think like in terms of like Craig Wolf Craig Wolfie is brilliant in this movie as well. Um, there's like a post credit scene as well, <laughs> which is just making me laugh how they describe it before. Um, But yeah, there is, um, you know, like I said, uh, there's a bit where they drive past, all, where I drive past all, there's also a scene where he sat, where Tony Craig is sat on a bench, and that is literally just down the road from where I live right now, well, I'm recording this video, which is mad, um, yeah, um, yeah, the performances here are actually quite good as well, they really embrace each character individually, which is cool and gives them their own sort of spotlight i think vinnie jones is, is a particular highlight but also i think t obviously terry stone as tony tucker is brilliant as well and I, and I think josh myers as um and i think josh myers as uh, uh kenny or ken is, is really a underrated character in all in this entire series i think and is great here um Yeah, it's just overall a really, really enjoyable movie. One of my more favourite movies of 2021 as well. Um, and I think it just proves my point more so that this movie is just so... Mm, hits the marks quite well, I think. And as a low-budget, almost indie movie, you know, it, it, it was funded through um, Indiegogo or GoFundMe, I think, one of the two. Not GoFundMe, um, Kickstarter. 
one of the two. But you can it was it was done like that. Actually turned out pretty fucking well. I can't lie. Yeah, it's just overall. I do really enjoy this movie. I've got it on Blu-ray. I've got it on DVD as well because both my collection is shit and that. But I think what really stands out with this movie, in my opinion, is its de departure from previous, from the tone of previous movies. It very much has a proper tone. The other ones have a somewhat silly tone at times, whereas this one, you know, retains the se quite serious tone of the original two movies, and visually also retains the visual style of, of the second movie more so than the, 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 the first one, and I think that helps it sit well, and I think, like I said, having car chases and stuff here, it's obvious, despite the fact this is a crowdfunded project, it clearly looks like it's had a higher budget than any of the previous movies, which, considering, as like I said, considering it's a crowdfunded, crowdfunded project, you know, is pretty, pretty mad, pretty mad. It's just overall a fantastic movie with a fantastic cast, a great soundtrack and score as always with these movies, and a great continuation of the depiction of this, you know, incredibly famous story in the UK at least, of these, of these, you know, gang leaders and stuff. And obviously while this one doesn't, while this one ends with Tony meeting Carlton Leach, and not how the other one end, not how most, well the other ones kind of end that way, but you know, he's alluding to that thing. This one ends completely different to any of the other ones have, with Carlton meeting, with, with Tony meeting Carlton and then the rest. And it's only assumed that you then, after this movie, watch the first one, but... Yeah. I think Vinnie Jones is brilliant in this movie as well. He, he plays a very interesting character, I think. And he plays a real person as well, Bernard O'Malley, who is an executive producer on this movie. And I think he's finally happy to have his story told in this movie because I think he was overlooked in the previous ones. I think he was a consultant on the original movie, but that movie chose to focus on Carlton Leach because he was more involved with any of them. He was the, he's literally the only person left alive who, the person, he is the one person left alive who is involved with them the most out of everyone who is left alive at this situation. So I think that's why they chose to go from his perspective because he was, not heavily, but he was still quite involved with the rest of them. He was more involved with Tucker and Tate and Rolfie than anyone else who's left alive today. Bernard was a side character in the story, which is probably why they went the route they did in the first movie, but hey, hey. It's still a very, very good movie. Nick Nervin's a great director and a great actor as well. I suggest you follow him on Instagram and Snapchat and stuff like that because he, he's a real joy to just watch do whatever he's doing. And yeah, I think this movie's brilliant. Uh, going into it, I wasn't thinking it was going to be too hot, but I actually had a great time and obviously these movies have high swearing, high sex, high violence, lots of blood, you know. They're not for the faint of heart. But they're still very enjoyable and they're movies that I think all of them, and I mean all of them, are great movies. So just when you need a movie to watch and you've got nothing left, you just go, fuck it, let's put on a foot soldier film, you know? And it's obviously the most successful of the incarnations of the story and I will probably eventually, in the far future, look at all the other, in one week, all the other, um, yeah, all the other incarnations of it. And, uh, yeah, tune in next, uh, you know in the next couple of weeks before the review of Polo Express will have the ultimate epic review of mine and that is the finale final non-Christmas related review of the year No Time to Die which will be coming out next Monday so stay tuned for that shit thank you so much for watching have a wonderful day don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and all that lovely shit bye bye for now